Let's take a look at this problem. We've got our demand function P is equal to 400 over X plus 2. Now if I were to rewrite this, this would be like 400 over X plus 2 to the first power. Or P is equal to 400 times X plus 2 to the negative 1. I know for the elasticity, we're going to need P prime. So I might as well go ahead and find it while I'm writing it down. P prime, take your power, put it out in front. Negative 1 times 400 is negative 400. X plus 2, lower power by 1, times the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. But derivative of X plus 2 is 1. So this gives us negative 400 over x plus 2 squared. Okay, now we want to find eta. And eta is equal to p over x over p prime. Now let me show you what, the, what it's supposed to look like since I can't draw it very well. Uh, it's fancy in. Um, that's eta. Now let's plug in what we got. Um, p is 400 over... Um, x plus 2, and then that's uh, over x, and then that's all over p prime, which is negative 400 over x plus 2 squared. Well, whenever you got a single fraction like this over another um, uh, denominator, then you can take this denominator and put it down with this one. So this becomes 400 over x times x plus 2 all over negative 400 over x plus 2 squared. Well, if I were to rewrite that, that's 400 over x times x plus 2 uh, divided by negative 400 over x plus 2 squared. If we were to rewrite that, Division becomes multiplication. We flip the second fraction. So that becomes x plus 2 squared over negative 400. These 400s would cancel. So it would have 1 over x times x plus 2 times x plus 2 squared over negative 1. And this x plus 2 cancels one of these x plus 2s. So it would have 1 over x times... Uh, x plus 2 over negative 1. Now I can multiply these together. So we'll have x plus 2 over negative x. And that's eta. Okay. Well, what we're specifically concerned with is we want the absolute value of eta is equal to 1. I'm going to look at the intervals, even though the problem's technically not asking for it. And then we'll go from there. So I'll plug that in. So we've got the absolute value of x plus 2 over negative x is equal to 1. Now you got the absolute value of something is equal to something else. You drop the absolute value. You set it equal to positive the other side. And you drop the absolute value. And you set it equal to negative the other side. Well, on this one, I multiply both sides by negative x. So we've got x plus 2 equals negative x. Take that x over and we get uh, negative x minus x, which is negative 2x, which gives us x is equal to negative 1. Now in this one, I multiply both sides by negative x, and we got x plus 2 is equal to x. Take that x over, and we get x minus x, or 2 is equal to 0, which doesn't make any sense. Now, actually, x equals 0 doesn't make any sense, but we'll go with it. We've got x is equal to negative 1. Over here would be our negative infinity. And over here is our positive infinity. And we want to choose test cases. Something between negative infinity and negative 1, like negative 2. And uh, something greater than negative 1, like 0. Now, we want to plug those in to the absolute value of eta which is the absolute value of x plus 2 over negative x. Well, if I put negative 2 in there, I'm going to have the absolute value of negative 2 plus 2 over 2, which gives us 0. And if I plug 0 in, 
I'm going to have um, 0 plus 2 over negative 0, which is undefined. Okay, now we came up with two bizarre, bizarre results here. And the reason why is um, because uh, we're talking about x, um, which is how many of whatever were sold. And so the x equals negative 1 didn't make any sense anyway. And obviously this doesn't. If I were to choose something that's a, that's a little bit more reasonable than, than 0, let me try uh, like x equals 1. I wanted to point out what would happen with that. If I put 1 in, we'd have 1 plus 2 over negative 1, which is 2 plus 1, which is 3, over negative 1, which is negative 3, and the absolute value of that is positive 3, which is greater than 1. If it's greater than 1, it means it's elastic. Now for this particular problem then, since we came up with the critical value we did, which is elastic, when x is uh, greater than 0. So it's elastic everywhere. So for the x value they're asking for, they're asking for x equals 100. Well, I know already that um, it's elastic. Is this elastic everywhere? Now if I were to plug that in to eta to begin with, eta is negative or x plus 2 over negative x. We're going to get uh, 100 plus 2 over negative 100, which is uh, 102 over negative 100. Then if we take the absolute value of eta, that's going to give us, um, what is that going to give us? Hmm. 102 divided by 100. The negative becomes positive with that, and we get 1.02, which is greater than 1, which we know is elastic already. So that would be our, our answer.